Good morning and welcome to Manifestation Mondays with River City Home Buyers. Um, this week, I do want to reference the term philosophy from the book by Ed Milet, The Power of One More, only I want to put a little bit different spin on it for you this time uh, when it comes to your growth and your success in your business. So we've talked a lot about looking at what's that one more thing that I can do today to draw more business, draw more clients, um, advance the skill set, make myself more valuable, add more value. And today I want to take it a little bit different spin and talk about, you know, whatever aspect of business you're in, whether you're a realtor, whether you're an investor, a wholesaler, a manufacturer, um, a teacher, a builder, a contractor, whatever you are, whatever you are and whatever you do, you know, there's at least a million more of you doing the same thing in a close geographic proximity um, and within a close network of space, okay? So you often hear the term, what are you doing to set yourself apart? So I take that also back to the power of one more. So what is that one more thing that you need to do that you need to capitalize on that you need to tweak that's going to set you apart from your competition and so the first example i can think of is customization okay um when people when you go somewhere for a service you want the full attention and you want the person that's providing that service for you to understand your needs, understand your specific requirements, if that's a good word, um, the specific things that are going to please you, make you happy and inspire you or convince you to do business with them and not somebody else. You go to a car dealership and if you get that concierge service from the sales department okay and you talk about some customizations you want in your vehicle what is important what's non-negotiable and if that person really goes out of their way to not only just take you out on the lot and just show you five cars and try to hurry up and write you a deal but maybe they go a little beyond and they offer some other options some other ways some other things um, they call you personally, maybe for a week or two, and then after you purchase the car, they follow up. They give you very personal attention, personal feeling. And, you know, sometimes you'll be like, I'm never going to another car dealership other than that one again. I'm only ever going to deal with that person again. You want to become somebody's first choice. You want to become the person that when your clients are considering doing business in the realm that you specialize in, that you become their go-to or one of their top go-to people. And this is really the only way that you're going to grow um, as a successful business owner, but how your business is going to grow as well. And so I call it like a concierge approach, okay? And it kind of goes back both ways to an extent as well, because you should also have a little box of what you consider your VIP clients, right? Those are the people that are solid and reliable, and maybe they're sometimes difficult a little bit to deal with, but the end result is always what you need it to be. Or maybe they're super easy to deal with and even though it takes them a little longer sometimes, it's worth it because again, the delivery is there. And so I'm gonna take this and just apply it in my own um, business. I have always, always, always 
from the jump eight years ago, um, made it a priority to take a very customized approach to my real estate business, to um, my client base and everything to do with that. So one way that I did this when I started out in wholesaling is when I built a buyer's list, um, I never wanted to be somebody's junk mail. I never sent out blast emails and these cutesy little things that you get on that connection, connect, alignable, whatever website, and you can design these little generic templates and make them, you know, whatever, and put all of your deals in a little thing and then blast them out on a mass email. I know that I delete 95% of those, those types of emails that I receive and I don't even open most of them. So I did not want to be in that bucket of somebody's automatic deleted email. And I don't think it's, you know, a successful path. So when I built my buyers list, um, and I think I see a lot of this in the, in the wholesale game for the most part, but yet not really. And I'll explain that too. But when I built a list, I literally got to know these buyers, these people um, at a very human one-on-one -on -one type level. And I made it my business to know specifically what types of properties with what types of margins in what types of neighborhoods, all of that appealed to those individual people. And um, I mean, you can make a spreadsheet to do this, whatever. So I only sent people deals when I got them that I knew were something that they individually and specifically would be interested in or would potentially buy. The result of that was I always got my text messages answered and answered very quickly. If I set up a time for them to view a property, they showed up. And I can honestly say 80% or better of the time, they made an offer on whatever property that was. Because I knew going into it how to tailor that. Also, they didn't ignore messages from me and they didn't overlook them they paid attention to them. Why? Because they didn't get that many. I didn't blow their phones or their emails up with things. They knew that if I was sending it, it was because it was something that fit in their box. Okay. Um, also I had to tailor their means of communication. Um, most people would prefer text messages. Some of them wanted to talk on the phone about it. And yet others would say, hey, email it to me after I had talked to them. So whatever they wanted in their specific means is what I did. And I have all these people calling me and they say, oh, can you give us your criteria? Tell me exactly what you buy, where do you buy? Is there a, a dollar amount, all of that? And they send me everything they get. So it kind of negates the entire process. So what I mean by customization is if you're going to do it and you're going to have that conversation with your people, okay, then actually make the effort to customize that service to those people. And you also have to build your, you know, become known as a, an expert, a knowledgeable consultant in your field. Okay. Um, that means that you have to be credible enough that if you send someone, you know, a product, a service, a deal, and you they already know, okay, she's sending this over. Um, I know that, you know, that's gonna be a pretty smooth transaction. Um, she's very efficient. I know that I have a reputation for um, being a mover and a shaker, like people that know me and do business with me, like to, you know, no, I don't like to let the paint dry. So I'm not a procrastinator. I don't let things sit. I don't take a week to follow through or get back. I'm on it. 
like right away um, because my clients and my business are important to me. So they deserve my full fast attention. And that is one form of concierge. That is one, one more thing, the power of one more. That's one of my one mores that I deliver that a lot of people don't. So just think about customization. Think about a concierge attitude and how can you create that and set yourself apart so that people will choose if they're choosing to do business with you or one of your competitors and everything else about the transaction or prospective transaction is pretty much the same or level they're going to choose you over the next guy make yourself your client's first choice or at least their top five set yourself apart for the doing that one more thing whatever that one more thing is that can make them see you and value you at a higher level than your competitors. I hope this helps everyone and I hope you have an awesome week.